Hey friends, good morning. In this lecture, what we'll try to basically understand is this. This is a body subjected to a plain state of stress, which are mainly defined by three stress components. What are they? Sigma X, Sigma Y, and Tau XY. This we have seen in the previous lecture. The whole objective of this lecture is to find out at Suppose there is a plane which is at an angle of theta with respect to this reference plane. Right, this plane is my reference plane and there is a plane which is at an angle of theta with respect to this reference plane. And at, in this plane, there are two stress components basically. The normal stress defined by sigma n and the shear stress defined by tau n. The objective of this lecture is to find out the values of sigma n and tau n. Let us see how can we do that. Uh, if we draw this triangular portion here as a free body diagram, then we have this forces meeting at this point and sigma n into dn will essentially give me the force in this direction so sigma n into dn gives me the force in this direction whereas tau n into dn gives me the force in this direction that I have drawn here this is at an angle of theta with respect to this reference plane and this tau sigma y into day is acting like this as we can see here sigma x into dx is acting like this you can see here tau xy into dax is acting along this plane so I have drawn it here and tau xy into day is acting like this so I have drawn it here and uh, observe the values of theta this is an angle of theta this is 90 degree minus theta so this is theta this is 90 degree minus theta this is theta so this is 90 degree minus theta theta and this is again 90 degree minus theta now let us see whether we can find out the values of sigma n and tau n from this free body diagram essentially we can let us resolve the other forces which are essentially sigma x, sigma y, tau xy, tau xy into the, in, let us resolve these forces into two components, right? If we resolve these forces into two components, what basically happens is that we have all the forces either aligned to n vector, that is in this direction, or aligned to this direction, that is the tau vector. Now if we take the forces aligned to n vector, we have some kind of a thing like this wherein this is equal to sigma n into dan, which will be equal to sigma x into dx will have a, a component in this direction, and dx is nothing but dan cos theta. And resolving it in this direction, we have another cos theta, so cos squared theta. Sigma y into day will essentially have a component in this direction also, so sigma y into dan sin theta because day is dan sin theta. And resolving it in this direction, we have another sine theta. And then you have the values of two tau xy into day and tau xy into dx having their components in their, this direction. So essentially this will be minus, minus tau xy. dx is nothing but dan cos theta. And this will have a component in this direction if it has, it's equal to sine theta. Minus, this is tau xy again into day that is dan sin theta and this has a component in this direction so it will be essentially cos theta now sigma n dn all this dn cancels out right if we take dn common and we cut it with the left hand side and right hand side if we cut it we have sigma n into is equal to sigma x cos squared theta plus sigma y or sigma x by 2, 2 cos squared theta, or sigma y by 2, 2 sine squared theta, minus 2 tau xy, or tau xy, sine theta cos, 2 sine theta cos theta, that is essentially sine 2 theta. So this is equal to sigma 2 cos squared theta can be written as 1 plus cos 2 theta, and this can be written as 1 minus cos 2 theta, and if we substitute this, we have sigma x by 2 plus sigma y by 2 plus sigma x minus sigma y by 2 cos 2 theta minus tau xy sine 2 theta. This is one equation we have obtained from this FPD and let us write it here. Sigma n is equal to sigma x sorry sigma x plus sigma y by 2 plus sigma x minus sigma y by 2 cos 2 theta minus tau xy sine 2 theta. Now let us try to resolve the forces along the tau vector direction, tau unit vector direction. And let us see what happens. 
Now, along tau unit vector direction, we have tau n into dan, which must be equal to, this will have a component in this direction, so it will be effectively minus sigma y, dy is dan, sin theta, resolving, we have another sin theta, so sin square theta. This will also have a component in, this will have a component along this direction, so effectively it will be plus sigma x, dan, dx is dn cos theta, and in this direction means sin theta. Right, and tau xy into dx means effectively I have a component along this direction, so it will be again plus tau xy and dx is nothing but dan cos theta and resolving it in this direction I have 1 cos theta more, so cos square theta and this will have again in this direction, so it will be negative tau xy into da y is nothing but da and sin theta into sin theta, that is sin square theta, right. So essentially I have sigma x minus sigma y, I think I made some kind of mistake in this, right. This is sigma x into dx and sigma x into dx is nothing but is equal to da and cos theta and I think then I have made a mistake here. So, sigma y into d a n sin theta, d a y is nothing but d a n sin theta, and then if you resolve it along this direction, it will be cos theta here and not sin theta. Right. So, sigma x minus sigma y by 2, 2 cos theta sin theta, that is essentially sin 2 theta plus tau x y cos square theta minus sin square theta, that is cos 2 theta. So, essentially, the value of tau n is sigma x minus sigma y by 2 sin 2 theta plus tau xy cos 2 theta. So a brief synopsis is like this. We have the plane state of stress and we consider a plane which is at an angle of theta with respect to this reference plane and on that plane there are values of normal stress and shear stress and the values of normal stress and shear stress can be obtained by this derivation as sigma n and tau n. Now in the next lecture what we'll try to basically understand is when we have the maximum value of normal stress, when we have the minimum value of normal stress, when we have the maximum value of shear stress and the planes at which they occur basically. Thanks a lot for listening. Thank you.